Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we are going to discuss about formation of atmosphere. Now when our earth was formed, it mainly consisted of hydrogen and helium atmosphere. But now when we see, we have nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide as the major constituents of our atmosphere. So how did we move from an atmosphere of hydrogen and helium to an atmosphere of nitrogen and oxygen? This is what we are going to see today. Now the atmosphere was formed into different stages. So here we are going to see the first atmosphere that was formed on earth. We know that the earth was formed of a solar nebula which mainly consisted of hydrogen and helium gas. So when the earth was formed we had a atmosphere which was mainly hydrogen and helium which you can see over here. But hydrogen and helium are very light elements and the gravitational pull of earth was not that strong. Therefore, you can see that slowly, slowly some of this hydrogen and helium were lost to the space. The gravitational pull from other space objects like the sun or the Jupiters or the Mars or some other nearby objects, they kept on pulling these hydrogen and helium elements away from our earth. Secondly, there was a formation of moon where we saw a large asteroid which came and collided with our earth forming moon. Now during this process also we, we lost a lot of gas from our atmosphere and therefore we see that there was a depletion of hydrogen and helium from our atmosphere. Moreover, there were a large number of solar storms from the sun and during these solar storms a lot of gases were moved away from our atmosphere because the gravitation was not strong enough to hold on to these elements and therefore we can see that the initial atmosphere was ripped away from the earth. We can see that the hydrogen and helium atmosphere was lost in first 50 million years of formation of earth and the main reasons were that the earth's gravity was not strong enough to hold on to hydrogen and helium elements because they are very light. The solar winds also took away a lot of hydrogen and helium from our earth and moreover there were a lot of collision of meteorites as well as formation of moon during which we lost a lot of gas from our earth. Now this led us to the second stage of atmosphere formation during which we got our second atmosphere. Now the earth which was a hot ball of molten rocks it cooled down the surface cooled down first there was heat within it. This heat was released to the atmosphere in the form of volcanoes. A lot of volcanoes were formed on the surface. Moreover, a large amount of gases came out of these volcanoes. Now if we see all three types of volcanoes, that is a hotspot volcano, divergent plate volcanoes or convergent plate volcanoes, we will see that the major gases that is emitted by these volcanoes is water vapor, carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Now some part of the gases in the second atmosphere were also contributed by comets. We saw that as much as 10 to 20 percent of water vapor came from comets because during this time there were a lot of meteorite comets in the surrounding and all of them kept colliding with our earth. Therefore they contributed as much as 10 to 20 percent of water vapor. So the second atmosphere mainly consisted of water vapor, carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. This continuous emission of gases from the volcanoes, it increased the amount of water vapor and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We can see over here that second atmosphere mainly consisted of water vapor and carbon dioxide. But with the temperature of the atmosphere going down, this water vapor condensed to form clouds and it started to rain. This rain continued for hundreds to thousands of years removing a lot of water from the atmosphere. We can see now that only this much amount of water vapor is in atmosphere now. All the, atmos all the water vapor that was in the atmosphere was removed due to this rainfall and it collected to form oceans and lakes and also it got collected into groundwater. We know that the carbon dioxide dissolves in H2O to form carbonic acid. Even today, during acidic rain, we can see a large amount of carbonic acid in it. So as it rained for hundreds and thousands of years, the water which came down, it absorbed the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and brought the carbon dioxide 
towards the land. So this process removed a lot of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as you can see over here. The carbonic acid brought the CO2 towards the ground and the carbon was also absorbed by the oceans which were newly formed. These oceans also started absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So because of these two processes, acidification of oceans as well as the formation of carbonic acid and acidic rain, the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere got removed. And this carbon dioxide which got removed from the atmosphere was absorbed by the rocks which you can see over here. That it got absorbed by the rocks and currently there is a very small amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. So what happened to this carbon dioxide? A lot of it was used by biosphere that is living beings. We all are formed of carbon elements. So a lot of carbon was absorbed by the living organisms. Acidification of oceans also removed a lot of carbon dioxide. Even we saw that the rocks also absorbed a lot of carbon dioxide because the carbonic acid reacts with rocks to form different compounds. A lot of carbon was also con converted to fossil fuels. So we can see that because of these processes, the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere got removed. And now there is only a fraction of atmosphere that consists of carbon dioxide. The early atmosphere had ammonia and methane in it, which are basically hydrogen compounds. Now this ammonia and methane reacted with hot water because the atmosphere was hot. It reacted with it to give other compounds and it was slowly removed from the atmosphere. So we can see that both ammonia and methane over the time either got divided or got reacted with hydrogen and they got removed from our atmosphere. During this process, nitrogen was also added to our atmosphere by the volcanoes. Nitrogen is emitted by the volcanoes in a very small fraction. But their continuous emission increased the level of nitrogen in our atmosphere. Now, there was a first sign of living organisms near the hydrothermal vents. We can see here that microorganisms were born which lived on anaerobic respirations. There was no oxygen released from them, but living organisms first came into existence near the hydrothermal vents within the sea. Around 3 billion years ago, we saw that first cyanobacteria appeared. These cyanobacteria were able to perform photosynthesis. They were present in the oceans. They released oxygen in the atmosphere, but the level of oxygen in the atmosphere did not increase as you can see over here. The reason is that the oxygen which was released, it got oxidized. It reacted with several other elements. If you see rocks of this age, you will get a red oxidation layers, mainly iron oxide layers you can found in them. So we can see over here that oxygen was not able to reach the atmosphere. But around 2 billion years ago, the oxygen started to increase in the atmosphere we can see that the level of oxygen started to increase and when this oxygen reached the upper layers we see formation of ozone layer over here because of this reaction formation of ozone was a very important step for existence of life on land because if there were no ozone then ultraviolet lights will reach our earth and any organisms which try to live on land would die but because a layer of ozone layer was created, it protected the living organisms from the ultraviolet lights thus enabling life on the land. Now further we see that the amount of nitrogen kept increasing. The nitrogen was emitted in very small amount from the volcanoes. But then how it became the most important element in our atmosphere today? To understand this we have to see that the nitrogen is actually chemically inert. So for this billion of years of emission, it did not react with anything. It is not soluble in water, so it is not easily removed from the atmosphere. Moreover, its fixation from the atmosphere occurs at a very slow rate. We know that lightning or nit nitrification bacteria are able to remove the nitrogen from the atmosphere. So because of these three reasons, the, the nitrogen survived in the atmosphere even though it was emitted in a very small amount in the atmosphere. Moreover, the residence time of this nitrogen in the atmosphere is very high. You can see over here. And this is why the 
परसेंटेज ऑफ नाइट्रोजन केप्ट इंक्रीजिंग एन द एटमोसफियर एंड एज वी सी टूडे नाइट्रोजन इज एज मच एज सेवेंटी एट परसेंट ऑफ अवर एटमोसफियर वाइल ऑक्सीजन इज अराउंड ट्वेंटी वन एंड आर्गन इज लिटल लेस देन वन परसेंट रेस्ट ऑल आर आर ट्रेस गैसेस ना इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिमेंबर द ऑर्डर ऑफ द परसेंटेज ऑफ गैसेस यू कैन यूज दिस निमोनिक नो ए सी नेवर हीट्स माई नाइफ हैंडल यू कैन सी एन स्टैंड फॉर नाइट्रोजन ओ फॉर ऑक्सीजन ए फॉर आर्गन सी फॉर कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एन ई स्टैंड फॉर नियॉन एच ई स्टैंड फॉर हीलियम एम मिथेन के क्रिप्टोनाइट एंड एच फॉर हाइड्रोजन सो इफ यू रिमेंबर दिस सेंटेंस यू विल बी एबल टू रिमेंबर द ऑर्डर ऑफ द गैसेस नाउ लेट डिस्कस आर्गन इन सॉफ्ट आर्गन इज emitted by potassium which is found in rocks in the granite and it is chemically inert and insoluble in water so even though it is released in very small amount it is because it is chemically inert and insoluble in water it stays in the atmosphere and therefore we see that it is around 0.93% of our atmosphere so from all these things we can see that what is the role of atmosphere it provides necessary gases for life we need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and we need oxygen for respiration of normal or living organisms so it provides this necessary gases for life it absorbs uv solar radiation we saw that the ozone layer which was created it helped in life on land without the ozone there was no life on land possible greenhouse effect is also there this carbon di gases water vapor gases they act as a blanket in the night the greenhouse effect is not necessarily bad but because today due to anthropogenic reasons we have increased the amount of greenhouse gases that is why it looks bad otherwise the greenhouse gas is very effective in keeping the temperature higher in the nights otherwise there would be extreme temperatures in the day and night these gases also play an important role in distribution of heat between equator and polar region we know that the heat from the sun mainly reaches the equatorial region because that region faces sun directly so there is an abundance of heat over there while the polar regions do not receive that much heat therefore it is necessary for the heat from the equator to be passed on to the polar regions and the atmospheric gases do this purposes the atmospheric gases also helps in providing rainfall to us which is very essential for life on our earth i hope you have liked our video where we showed that how our atmosphere was formed right from the beginning of formation of our earth if you liked our video then please subscribe like and share it with our friends please follow us on our twitter and instagram handle